Crosswind to the east. So we're going to position the ailerons that way. Got it. He's in the power. Nose comes up. Little right rudder. Awesome. They're off. Should be off right now. You're good. Just get it up to out, do some turns and stuff, let you fly it, come back in, do a nice landing. All right, let's level it out. And typically you can run the UL power at 2,800 RPM all day long. 2,800. Uh, you know, today it's very smooth. I could run it 2,800, be just fine. But if it's a, just a little bit choppy, then I like to run it about uh, 26 to 27. What's your 75% uh, power normal cruise? What would you be? Uh, about 2,700. Okay. And then uh, that's where you can get, uh, at 2,800, that's where you can get 120 miles an hour. All right, we're, we're shooting uh, right now 111 true air speed. And we're still powered back a lot, quite a bit. We're actually climbing still 200 feet a minute. <laughs> the nice thing about the cruiser is you have so much forward visibility. The nose is down about a degree and a half compared to a lot of aircraft. Yeah, so, you can see over good. Right. There's level flight right there. Excellent visibility. Yeah. Thanks, Cessna. You yeah. got the we're 118 nose. true speed. Okay, that's At true 20. on the bottom there. Uh -huh. Now you're almost 17 and right. indicated. All right. So let's bring back power and we'll do some turns. And you see right out of the skylight there in a turn, makes it nice for... Yeah, I like uh, that. You know, uh, looking for traffic or if you're in a canyon trying to maneuver around some canyons. Uh, we don't have too many here. No, we don't. <laughs> uh, I guess if we get low enough, the corn stalks or something. Yeah, let's hope not. Uh, do you have anything to show you where you're, uh, like, 30 degree banks? Yes, right here. That's my oh, okay. artificial horizon. Okay. So right now I'm rolling out and it's showing me zero bank right, right there and then uh, 45. I just wanted because I'm, I'm used to the normal. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead, try it if you like. Okay. Yep. All right. And I like to set the stick up when I build the aircraft. I rest my arm on my leg and just rotate yep. my uh, wrist for the control. Try some easy ones first. Sure. I'm going up, eh? Yeah, it's e very easy to climb. Yeah, I can trip. say that. Very easy to climb. Hey, I can't tell if we're going up or not. I'm just... There's our VSI. Yeah, just look out. You know, we're just takes, using the horizon. It takes you about 10 hours to really get used to any glass cockpit that if you're not used to flying besides the steam gauges. Yeah. Uh, so loud. And you're putting in the Corvair engine in your aircraft. That's excellent. Got it. You've been uh, working with uh, William Wynn going to his okay. colleges? Not yet. Uh, I've actually got the engine built. Okay. I've uh, been uh, talking to SBA and William about it. Right. And uh, it's built. It's ready to actually fire off right now. Right. Well, he's he's full of uh, full of knowledge. He's very, very bright in the, the Corvair engine. So I would take everything that he says. Yeah, you know, he does. And, he knows his stuff. Exactly. He knows his stuff. He's good. He's not climbing. Yeah, you're, you're just holding right not too bad. Just trying to hold it in a uh, steady. Uh, do you lead with, with the rudder? I do. I personally, okay. I do, yes. Yeah, I was wondering on this thing if you lead or not. I used to always lead. Right. Then you don't use as much ailerons. Right. Going around and clinging a figure eight. Now we're going up. Boy, that thing goes up easy. <laughs> All right, let's roll it. Continuous roll. Sure. Around. Wait, turn camera. How you doing? <laughs> Yeah, nice, beautiful day to be doing a demo flight, flying around. 
Uh, we're here at the, what, the March? March 8th and 9th, 2018 uh, rudder workshop. It's been a little cool these last two days, but uh, it's, it's warmed up compared to the last few, couple days. Um, we're, you started building the rudder. Um, can you just tell me how it's going and uh, everything? It's the easiest airplane I ever put together. I put one together before, built fabric. I'll do the metal ones any day. Okay, it's good. It's very simple, straightforward, you can't mess up. It's good. And it seems like you're here with your brother. It seems yep. like you guys are really having a great time. Uh, you know, we, we built the brother most of all yesterday, and then we uh, we went to dinner and uh, chatted and talked about airplanes all night. Good time. And that's always fun, you know, uh, sitting I'll back. I'll tell you and, what. Uh, Anybody that's building one ought to come up. Oh, yeah, definitely. They, definitely. It, it, it's worth your time. Well, and you meet the factory uh, workers. You get a tour of the factory. You, you see working people working in the factory. You see shipments going in and out. Uh, you can talk to us. So, you know, when you do purchase that kit, you know, you do have a relationship between us. And, you know, you don't feel, uh, you know, you feel very eager to, you know, call us if you have a problem or you're missing a part because we know each other. Uh, you get a demo flight at the factory. Uh, which is nice, you know, a lot of customers uh, that <laughs> that doesn't come to the work or to the factory for a demo flight, uh, they probably go with the dual stick because they don't think they can fly with the center stick. 99% uh, of all my customers come to the factory for a demo flight, they see that you can fly right. with the dual stick. Oh yeah, you stick. can, but in my case, I will be going, You're going dual. with the dual stick. Okay, I've we're flown going through, odd ones. I've flown 300 hours with a dual stick, I'm still low time pilot. Right. I love the dual stick. Yeah. The only disadvantage, only disadvantage with the dual stick I see is, is getting in and out. I'm not that old yet. Uh, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're having a great time here at the workshop. Uh, you know, it's, it's you learn a lot of knowledge. It's you not do. like you need to come to the workshop. You've already built an airplane, so you would have no problem at your home building your own rudder. No problem. But uh, it's all the other stuff that you're gaining. You, I still gained a lot of knowledge. You know, yeah. little uh, tricks of the trade and stuff like that, you know. Right. What you can do, what you don't want to do, you know. Exactly. It's important to learn the little stuff, and uh, I figure the only way to get it is really talk to you guys, because you built one or two in your life, I think. One or two, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you know, I tell you what, why don't we go back and try to set up for a downwind right. base final and a nice landing. Sure. And uh, you were concerned, and uh, not concerned, but uh, eager to learn about that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to take the transitional flying, you know, right. uh, and... Um, you know, go from what I went to to this, you know, it's totally right. different, and uh, it's a little bit heavier airplane than I was used to. I was in a lot lighter, one in ultralight, but it right. was a light plane. And you were asking me, I think yesterday, you know, you was asking, well, how do I get transition training? Uh, yeah. I, I strongly recommend that, uh, you know, legally, you know, you can fly any plane without transition training. Yeah. Uh, all you need is three takeoff and landings every 90 right. days to take up a passenger, right. but uh, that doesn't make you safe or current. Yeah. Uh, what I would recommend is, is you either find a Zenith builder that has one of the airplanes if you live somewhere else in the world or away from us and uh, have to take you up for a few hours or we have a, a customer in uh, Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, Buzz Air, Buzz Air. I that talked Hilton, to him. He's that'll good. take you up, give you five hours, it'll meet your uh, yeah. insurance qualifications. Yeah, most insurance I checked on it last week, they yeah. went three hours and I said Buzz does five, it's well worth it. Yes. Uh, first time I took my uh, first experimental up, I had no idea how to fly it. Yep, exactly. And I don't want to go through that again. I want to be able to jump in it and know what it's going to right, do. Right, exactly. Know how to take it off, know how to land it, know how to stall it. Exactly, exactly. And, so uh, uh, It'll be yeah, good. I, I, I feel a lot more confident on this one. Exactly, exactly. You know, it, uh, Buzz has a great operation down there, That's and he'll, he'll make sure that before you leave there that you can actually fly the aircraft. Yeah, he told me something about it. I'll be doing party takeoff and landings in an hour. Right. I go, yeah. All right, we'll have fun. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that, that's where you gain all your knowledge is in the yeah. pattern, you know, yep. the flying slow, takes off and landing. Yeah. So. Because once you learn how to fly, it's no big deal, you exactly. know. Up here, this is good, you know. Just get the rust knocked off. I'm what they consider a rusty pilot, you know. Right. And we're gonna we'll get that knocked off. It it comes back so fast. fast it's, no problem. And Mexico traffic, Springfield 750 Cruiser is going to be in a left down wind at the 45 for 1A Mexico. Alright, we got gas, undercarriage, mixed to prop seat belts. Blue and we're going to <laughs> get down to 1800. There you go. the pattern. Is that your pattern, 1800 here? Uh, yeah, it is, yes, oh, okay. 1000 feet above. 
Yeah, I'll probably be coming up here a bunch because uh, you're only an hour away. That's right. You're welcome anytime. <laughs> you know, you don't even have to call. If you just want to look at the airplane, look at the parts and see how things are going together. I, I figure when I get flying, I'm going to be buying gas up here. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we should have a fly out to all the local Missouri guys really? just fly in here and fly yeah. out sometime. Okay, we're beating the numbers. I missed it just a little bit by chit chat. Yeah. So we'll beam the numbers, bring back the power, pinch the nose up a little bit. My airspeed is actually decelerate. Right. And once I get in the flap, then I'll just lower the flaps just a few degrees. Uh, all we have is uh, 15 degrees, but it's a full, it's called a flapper on a full length, so I have a lot of actually surface right. area. Right, the whole thing. Right. That's the way my old plane was. And you can trim it for 500 feet, but I like a little stick pressure, so we're about 550. Yep. Check for traffic. I'm a little bit fast there, so I'm going to slow it down, pull back power just a little bit. This thing slow down pretty easy. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's no issue. I'd like, no problem. Now, some of them like to glide forever. It does have a good glide compared to our store aircraft, yes. Hey, Mexico traffic, Spiramos turning final for 1-8 Mexico. So, and you got the wind going that way, so it's going to push you a little bit. Right, the wind's coming from the southeast, uh, so yeah. I'm going to have to hold a little bit of left aileron in, low exactly. wing. Hey. That's not a very, look, overshot it just a little uh, bit. Ah, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Even the best do. Hey, you're good. Okay, we're going to start slowing it down to, oh, you know, 60 or less. Can yeah, we do a slip in it? How's it slip? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it slips slip fine. It. Pull it up and drop, yeah. drop it. Yeah. How's but uh, you just don't need to if you, you know, just bring back the power, bring the nose up a little bit. <laughs> now, if you want to slip it, you know, if you're coming in, like, over some mountains or something like that, mm -hmm. your runway or your grass is, you know, obstacles, yes, you'd really want to slip it. Yeah, we used to do that at uh, Weiss Airport up in uh -huh. St. Louis. We had a hill we got to come up. Okay, we're going to slow it down, add the rest of the flaps, rest of the flaps there. And Beautiful. A little bit hot, a little bit heavy. Yeah. I passed the first mark. Yeah. Maybe the second. Yeah. I, I was a little bit high. That's, That's okay. okay. The bleed off. You're there. You're Stay there. right on the center line. I like a, I like a pilot that lands on the center line. That's we got two. We got two out of those. Yeah, nothing wrong. Double duty. Look at that. Right twice, on the center right? line. That's right. Two points. <laughs> it paid twice. I was talking too much there, so. It's okay. Hey. Good. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. And, yes, it uh, did. We have to get back and uh, finish your rudder. So how to get back to work? That's exactly. Can't play all the time, Kim. <laughs> well, that's playing well, for me. Do the rudder. That's playing for me. They still say you got the best job in the world. <laughs> Don't tell everybody. All right. I know. Oh, it is fun, oh, you know. Don't tell it, Sebastian, right? That's right, that's right. <laughs> no, it, it is fun, and it's oh, not beca fun because I get to go flying. It's because I meet all all these really? great customers that have so much different backgrounds, you know, in their career. They've wanted to do this all their life, and then, yep. now they've got the time and the money and, the, and to do it. You know, that's what's nice. And, uh, this is my bucket list here. And, and, and my customers are coming <laughs> in. They're happy. They're excited. There's some fields they that... They want to uh, be here. Yeah, exactly. You know, I can't believe working in some other industries but when people are not happy. It's like, oh, man, this is so great. You know, everybody's... You Smiling and you don't know how good you got it, Roger. Yeah. Well, he don't. <laughs>